So the Big Bang Theory, the Big Bang Theory has the universe beginning, beginning at roughly 13.7 billion, 13.7. Let me write this: 13.7 billion years ago. That's when the entire universe was just one tiny singularity. There, years ago, we take say the entire universe. We're talking about all of all of space was this little singularity, 13.7 billion years ago. And then if we, as right after that moment, if we move, we're going to move what's by our uh, for for our type of time scales, a, a long amount of time, but by kind of a cosmological time scale, just really a a fraction of a moment. But if we move ahead. 300 and and actually the actual number is about 380,000 years. This is our best estimate. 380,000 years forward. So we're still pretty close to the beginning, especially if you saw that correction I made on the last video. That still doesn't really change. We're still roughly 13.7 billion years ago because this is this is only 0.3 million years. So if we rounded, we're still right about there. But we're just a fraction of a moment into the history of the universe. The universe has expanded, expanded a good bit relative to that singularity. It has some space, but it's still this unbelievably dense it's still this unbelievably dense place. Un so super dense instead of unbelievably. It's super dense. It's this super dense place, especially relative to the universe that we have today. But this super dense universe, we have all of these uh, things. We have enough space for actual uh, uh, hydrogen plasma to form. I won't even call it stable, stable hydrogen atoms, because they're still just bumping into each other. It's just a very dense place. And it's white hot. I mean, it's infinitely energetic at, at the Big Bang. But we're still so dense, things are still bumping into each other and vibrating with, 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 at, at, at such high energies. It's just this high, white hot haze. So let me call it white, white hot haze, haze of hydrogen plasma. Hydrogen, hydrogen plasma. We're still on cosmological scales, not fa that far into the life of the universe. So that's what the Big Bang would predict, and all of the models based, on, or most of the models that are based on the Big Bang at around 380,000 years would have this white hot hydrogen plasma. And then if we fast forward, just to kind of make sure we understand where the story is going, if you fast forward 400 million years. So that's a lot more time. This is obviously not drawn to scale. Then we've the the all of space has expanded enough to kind of give some breathing room. Actual stable atoms form, and while we're getting to that 400, while we're going through that 400 million years, and those hydrogen atoms start to condense around each other slowly, slowly, slowly. 400 million years, once again, is is a pretty long. In fact, this is an unfathomably long period of time. 13.7 billion is really unfathomable, but already 400 million. Frankly, even 380,000 years is an unfathomable uh, uh, amount of time. But a after 400 million years, you have the first stars. These hydrogen atoms start to, you know, things start to get a little bit sparse, but then you have clumps of things because of gravity. And then those clumps become denser and denser and denser. And eventually, they get dense enough, and they can attract enough atoms that you actually have you actually have atomic fusion. And you actually have stars form. And we'll do whole videos on the fusion inside of stars. And this is, I'll call this the first generation of stars. First generation, because we know. You know, I'm talking about we just have hydrogen right over here, and we know now that we have this entire periodic element, periodic table of elements of uh, uh, a periodic table of elements. Uh, you know, just in our Earth, we have iron and nickel and these very heavy, heavy atoms that are much heavier than the hydrogen atom, and these were actually made in this first generation, or maybe in the first and second generation of stars. The hydrogen, once it gets packed closely enough with enough pressure, it fuses into helium, and then and then the helium is used as fuel for heavier and heavier atoms, and things get, keep getting fused and fused together inside of the cores of these stars until they run out of fuel, and sometimes they will just explode. And that heavier, those heavier atoms will then spread into the rest of space. And many of those heavier atoms have made it into our solar system and our bodies. And so if you go all the way to the present, a lot of then, then we start having these stars, or not even just these stars, second generation stars, condensing into galaxies. Uh, you have the dust around them containing heavier elements elements that can actually condense into planets. So that's way far off here. But that's not going to be the focus of this video. We'll talk more about that, how solar systems and planets are formed in the future. What I want to focus on is this white hot, 
when, on this white hot hydrogen plasma 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Because if this is true, if this really did happen, if we were to look at any photons, any electromagnetic waves emitted from this period in time that's taken a little under 13.7, 13.7 billion minus 380,000 years, if it's taken that long to get to us, it was emitted at this period of time. And so if it really was a white hot haze, and if we were to really look at photons, at the electromagnetic waves that are, that are just reaching us from that period of time, it should be uniform. It should not be differentiated. When you look at things closer up to us, it's very differentiated. You see pockets of brightness, and then you see pockets of complete darkness. We, the, our current universe seems very differentiated. So in order for the Big Bang or, to be true, we should be able to observe this kind of uniform background radiation all around us. And at first, you know, obviously with your eye you don't see it. If you look into the night sky, you just see big pockets of, of, of black where you don't see any radiation coming from. And even with primitive telescopes, we didn't see anything until the late 1960s. And the late 1960s, we were able to observe the cosmic, cosmic microwave, microwave background radiation background back ground radiation and it's you know it's fairly uniform no matter where we look in the sky these photons that are coming from this time period are all uniform you don't see pockets of intensity coming from a star or a galaxy or a cluster of galaxies it's just all uniform and not only is it all uniform but most of the energy is in the microwave in the microwave segment of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is what something like this white hot haze of hydrogen plasma would emit at the type of energies that we're dealing with right over here. So just to make sure uh, we understand what's going on here. So first of all, this is a big deal that this was discovered. Because, OK, you believe in the Big Bang. You know Everything is expanding from everything. At some point, everything must have had to be in this one singularity. But if that's the case, at some point, you would have had this white hot haze. If you don't observe this cosmic microwave, wave background radiation, then this is this becomes hard to believe. But if you do, then all of a sudden this becomes this becomes a lot, a lot more digestible. So actually the people who who actually observed this, who discovered this, actually got the Nobel Prize and, and they deserve to. But I, I want you to I want you to really internalize why it makes sense that we get this uniform radiation from every direction in the universe. So let's go back, let's go back to this to this depiction of the observable universe that I showed many, many videos ago. So this is us sitting here on Earth in our solar system inside of our local group, which is part of the Virgo supercluster, right here in the center of our observable universe. And we're the center of the observable universe, not necess not most probably not the actual universe, but we're the center of the observable universe because it's defined by what we can observe. It's defined by universe, a, a, a uniform radius around us. Now let's think about what's happening as we look further and further out. Stuff over here, stuff over here that's roughly a billion light years away, that when we're observing that stuff, we're just seeing the photons that were emitted from that part of space one billion light years ago. So not only are we looking a billion light years away in space, we're also looking a billion light ways, a billion light years back in time. So this will be a slightly more primitive universe, but still, uh, or, or, or stage of the universe. But this will still be differentiated. So when you look at this part of the universe, you would have these pockets of brightness and complete pockets of darkness. And then if you look further back, you're not only looking further far away, but you're also looking further back in time. Because the photons that were emitted from here, and just getting to us right now, were emitted, if I just look at this, roughly about 5 or 6 billion years ago. So you're going to look at even a more primitive universe. And then if you go all the way back over here to that stage where the first stars form, Right over here, Though that light that's reaching us just from there, that's from that very first stage. We're not only looking a huge distance in space, and that space is expanding, and we learned a little bit about that in, in, in the last video. But we also saw, we're also going back a huge distance in time. We're looking at a very primitive universe. And if we go all the way to the limits, if we go all the way to 13.7 billion, 
light years away. That light, and I have to be very careful based on what we said in the last video. It's, that distance is not 13.7 billion light years away anymore. That actual coordinate in space is now 46 billion light years away. But those photons that have traveled 13.7 billion years, they are showing us an image of something that occurred 13.7 billion years ago. They're showing us, they're showing us that white hot haze, and I'll write it in white. They're showing us that hydrogen plasma. Right, that's green. Hydrogen. They're showing us that hydrogen plasma. And so you should see that in every direction as you look back 13.7 billion years. Because when you look 13.7 billion years, all of this all of this around the sphere of looking around us that is all at the same primitive stage in the history of the universe and it and so it makes complete sense that the photons emitted that are just getting to us from this area out here that it, they would all be uniform because we hadn't differentiated at that point into stars and planets and galaxies and all of and superclusters and all of the other things and so that's why, it, 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 one, it, it, we, we, we are experiencing this cosmic background radiation from every direction. And it's also a reason why that's a, a pretty strong piece of evidence that the Big Bang occurred. Because we feel pretty good that everywhere in the universe, about 13.7 billion years ago, was this white hot haze of hydrogen plasma. Let me be clear. This coordinate in the universe right now is actually today, right now, I mean, it's hard to think about it, it is differentiated. It's just the photons that we're getting from there now actually left 13.7 billion years ago when it was a white hot plasma. If there's another, so over the last 13.7 billion years, this actually has differentiated. It's probably turned into stars and galaxies and planets. And maybe civilizations have come out here. And maybe those civilizations are asking the exact same questions that we're asking. And when they look at photons emitted from our region of space, they don't see Earth. They don't see the sun. They don't see the Milky Way. They don't even see, they don't even see anything differentiated. They, too, from this region of space, will just see a white hot haze because they're seeing our region of space as it was 13.7 billion years ago. Anyway, hopefully that you found that uh, a slightly uh, illuminating.